Hey everybody, welcome back to another tutorial on something fun and exciting. Ooh, the thrills. <laughs> Sound effects are always so useful. Well, today I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to look at the automatic calendar upload so you can create your lovely calendars rather than living in this land of blank calendars. Um, again, it's really a truly a requirement so that we know what's going on with your schedule. If you look here, Cindy has already completed hers and you can see where she is in terms of what sorts of rooms she's in and how to get a hold of her throughout the day. So I'm going to go ahead and turn her off really quickly and get back to the tutorial. So here we go. We're sitting here in um, the faculty portal area and you can see the menu over here on the right hand side. You click menu and go to teacher resources. The area we're going to is in the calendars and links resources. So you click this button up here, you can see it right here. I'm going to maybe zoom in a little bit, zoom out a little bit, click that. Okay, once you're in this area, you'll see a lot of information. You know, the subscriptions to the regular calendars are still here. Um, my appointment calendar, which is now available and ready for folks who need to spend some time getting training or time with, with me working with our kids, that can be reached right here. Um, if you need to get into lower school spaces, that's down there. Um, and then for even further down, you have additional information that's coming about Morrow House and Little School. But right here where it says creating your schedule, we're going to go to the main scheduler webpage. This is the link that leads us to a very familiar yet old space. If you click that, you will end up with a new tab and this information that says, Welcome to the Color Day Calendar Automator. Woohoo! Once you are here, go to where it says choose your school and it's a drop down list with a ton of schools. It's in alphabetical order though and we are EMS. If you look at the different listed items, you will see that there's EMS 1, 2, 3, 4, Kindergarten, Marl House Monday through Friday, or Monday, Friday, and Marl House Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. These are distinct schedules that you need to be aware of for your grade level. If you're going to be in Morrow House, you need to first fill out the Monday, Friday, and then fill out the Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday calendar and have both of those so you accurately populate things based on our shifting schedules on the two ends of the day of the week. If you're in first, second, third, or fourth grade, you're gonna, or kindergarten, you're going to use these schedules because they are already preset with times that come close to matching the times at which you have different transitions and activities and special activities. If you're on a funky schedule, if you're a specialist, you can choose any of the EMS 1, 2, 3, 4 or kindergarten calendars to get started on. Once you go in there, you're going to have to click this button that says enable custom times. That means you're going to be editing specifically each time to match what you're doing. I'll go through that in a little bit, but until we get to that piece, I also need to address those folks who travel between Morrow House and Little School. Your schedule lives in two different worlds. You're going to have to do a Morrow House one, which will be Monday, Friday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, but all of your Little School classes will have to be done in either a one, two, three, four, or kindergarten layout. And then you'll have to take separate lists from each of those in order to create your calendar. I'm going to go ahead and create a little test calendar right now with just using the EMS third grade. What I would do is I would say, say that I'm a specialist who teaches weaving on A days and D days at the little school. I would go ahead and have those two pieces there and maybe I also teach um, a end of day weaving class on B days and on E days. So with those pieces of my schedule, I would then go ahead and go down to where it says email address and I type my email address in twice. So I would type in as with tomorrow email address once, twice. Look how it autofilled for me. It's so used to me being here. And then I would click email calendar file to import. Once I've done this, ta-da, I have a calendar. Wait, there's more. I am at Morrow House too for part of my day, so I have to do a Monday Friday schedule, which means on A days up at Morrow House, I do weaving at 1030. And I do it on C days and I do it on F days. 
And then I also maybe do something else, I'm not sure, but I'm gonna go ahead and just do my information here. And then email calendar file to import. Now on the schedule, I can still use that now switching over to the Tuesday, thir Wednesday, Thursday schedule and go in and look at that same block of time where I would teach that class. And if it was 10.30 Mondays and Fridays, then on Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursdays, I know that there's a different time that it occurs at, and I have to put weaving for those same letter days at the alternative time. So I have my weaving there as well, and then I go ahead and I email the calendar to import it to my email address. and go ahead and send it. I have now sent myself three distinct separate files that contain information about my schedule and my calendar. I can now go into my mail and once I get into my mail I should see in my inbox a calendar ICS file has arrived. It's actually three of them and if I click this really quickly just to show you you can see that there are three individual emails all sent with this weaving class or the weaving classes that I teach. I can also see, if I don't see them in the inbox, I can also check out my spam folder. Oftentimes the ICS files from this place go into spam um, just because of the attachments that are on them. So check your spam file, check that they're there, and then go ahead and grab that information. I'm going to go back into the ICS file here. I'm going to go to the first one and I'm going to click download in order to get the, the file that I need for the first one. And then I'm going to go to the next one and I'm going to click download again. And I'm going to go to the third one and I'm going to click download again. I now have all three ICS files available to me and I'm going to take the next step of going into the calendar. In the calendar, all you need to do is you need to go in to my calendars and we're going to do a test calendar first to make sure we did the schedule correctly. Please, please, please don't import without doing this test calendar. Do this first. Go to my calendars, go to create a new calendar, call it test. You're going to delete it. Click create calendar. You're not sharing this calendar with anybody or doing anything else with it. And once you get to that step, we will continue. Once you have your test calendar done, you can go ahead and find it in your calendars just to check that it's really there. As you can see, it's highlighted already, which means that it will show up on my calendar once I add the next piece. Go back to where it says my calendars and use the drop down arrow on the right hand side to again go where it says create new calendar, but you're going to go to settings instead. You're going to click settings, not create new calendar. You already created your test calendar, and now you're going to go to settings, and you're going to go ahead and you're going to scroll down to an area where it says import calendar. Now I have a lot of calendars in my on my back end, so please be aware that yours won't look like that. You see where it says import calendar right here? That's where you're going to want to click, import calendar. So go ahead and click that button and change your calendar before you do anything else. Change it to the test calendar. You don't want to accidentally import this into a very important calendar. So once you have the test calendar chosen, you're going to go ahead and choose file and you're going to go to those ICS files. They should be in your downloads and if your downloads are at all messy like mine are right now, you'll see them listed as ID and then a bunch of numbers, which isn't very helpful, especially if you downloaded a couple of mistakes. What I suggest to you if you downloaded a couple of mistakes is change the way your files look by choosing the several lines in a row. This view of your files will give you the date. And you can see that these three were all downloaded today at 1143. Click open and then choose import. It said I processed 110 events. That's 110 times that class occurred in that file. The next thing I'm going to do is go ahead and repeat that process for any additional files that I have and make sure they're all on test calendars. Don't make the mistake of putting it on your regular calendar. It's really hard to remove 110 files or in this case just 34 
from your regular calendar. I've got one more to go. I'm going to change to test first just because I do not want to make a mistake. Choose file and choose the next file. Hit import. 48 more events. Then I'm going to go ahead and hit close, go back up to the calendar. And as you can see, with only the test calendar selected, I can see where my weaving classes are located in time. I can go forward into the future, and they should all be placed perfectly for my class. If you go to a far future date, let's, let's go for something in February, and it's a school holiday of some sort, so I'm going to pull up the letter day calendar just so we can show what should be happening. CDE days, those match what's on my schedule. This is great. It skipped the two days of holiday. If I keep going forward a little bit, I know that we had another break. I'm not sure if this is a holiday or if it's because of an, an event. But you can see that on that holiday, it skipped that, as well as keeping true to what's going on on my eight-day schedule. I have now checked that those calendars are correct for my test calendar. I'm going to go ahead and uncheck the letter day calendar. I'm going to go back up to the drop-down arrow. I'm going to go over to settings. I'm going to find that test calendar and I'm going to unsubscribe to it. Unsubscribe is the same as delete in the new Google setup. So I go ahead and click unsubscribe to the test calendar. Confirm the unsubscribe. That calendar has now disappeared. I am now going to re-import all of those files, all three of those files, into my main calendar because I've proven that they actually work, that they look right, that I didn't make mistakes, and that the system didn't make a mistake. I go back to import calendar. It will default to the correct calendar. You don't need to change this anymore. Then go to choose file, and I'm going to re just repeat the same steps as before. I'm going to upload each of these calendars into my main calendar so that I have access to all of those dates with information for the classes that I'm teaching. Hope this tutorial was helpful. If you have any questions, please feel free to get a hold of Sarah, Jason, Sam Mora, or myself, and we will walk you through these steps.